wisdom. The final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1,249 of our trek, and it is time for Meditation Monday. Taking time to relax, refocus, and reprioritize our lives is crucial in order to create a living legacy. For you, it may be just a time alone for quiet reflection. You may utilize some sort of structured meditation practices. In my life, meditation includes reading and reflecting on God's Word and in prayer. It is a time to renew my mind, refocus on what is most important, and making sure that I am nurturing my soul, mind, and body. As you come along with me on our trek each Meditation Monday, it is my hope and prayer that you too will experience a time of reflection and renewing of your mind. Have you ever thought what it would be like to be the Apostle Peter, someone who rashly promises undying devotion one moment, then running to the hills the next moment? Maybe you can relate to Peter and his actions. Either way, Peter is a perfect example of our floundering devotion to God that all of us experience. We will look at part one of our story today and then finish next Monday. In our meditation today, let's consider God's Amazing Grace, part one. The sun was starting to shimmer over the water before Peter noticed it. A wavy circle of gold on the surface of the sea. A fisherman is usually the first to spot the sun rising over the crest of the hills. It means that his night of labor is finally over. But not for today for this fisherman. Though the light reflected on the lake, the darkness lingered in Peter's heart. The wind chilled, but he did not feel it. His friend slept soundly, but he didn't care. The nets at his feet were empty. The sea had been a miser this night. But Peter wasn't thinking about that. His thoughts were far from the Sea of Galilee. His mind was in Jerusalem, reliving the anguished night. As the boat rocked, his memories raced. The clanking of the Roman guard. The flash of a sword and the duck of a head. The touch of Malchus, a rebuke for Peter. Soldiers leading Jesus away. What was I thinking? Peter mumbled to himself as he stared at the bottom of the boat. Why did I run? Peter had run. He turned his back on his dearest friend and ran. We don't know where. Peter may not have known where either. He found a hole, a hut, an abandoned shed. He found a place to hide, and he hid. It is recorded in Matthew chapter 26, verse 33, that earlier that day, Peter declared, Even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Yet he did. Peter did what he swore he wouldn't do. He had tumbled face first into the pit of his own fears. And there he sat in the boat, with tears streaming down his face. All he could hear was the hollow promise. Everyone else may stumble, but I will not. Everyone else, I will not. I will not. I will not. The war raged within this fisherman. At that moment, the instinct to survive collided with his allegiance to Christ. And just for a moment... Allegiance won. And as they put Jesus on trial, Peter stood and stepped out of hiding and followed the noise until he saw the torchlit jury in the courtyard of Caiaphas, the high priest. He stopped near the fire and warmed his hands. The fire sparked with irony. The night had been cold. The fire was hot. But Peter was neither. He was lukewarm. We are told in Luke chapter 22, verse 54. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. Peter was loyal. From a distance. That night Peter went close enough to see, but he thought that he was not close enough to be seen. The problem was, Peter was seen. 
Other people near the fire recognized him. You were with him, they challenged. You were with the Nazarene. Three times people said it, but each time Peter denied it. Each time Jesus heard his denial. As we look at this, please understand that the main character in this drama of denial is not Peter, but Jesus. Jesus, who knows the hearts of all people, knew the denial of his friend. Three times the salt of Peter's betrayal stung in the open wounds of the Messiah. How do I know that Jesus knew? Because we can read in Luke chapter 22, verse 61. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you would deny me three times that you even know me. When the rooster crowed, Jesus turned. His eyes searched for Peter, and they found him. At that moment, there were no soldiers, no accusers, no priest. At that pre-dawn moment in Jerusalem, there were only two people, Jesus and Peter. Peter would never forget that look. Though Jesus' face was already bloody and bruised, his eyes were firm and focused. Jesus' stare drilled a hole into Peter's soul. His eyes were the scalpel laying bare Peter's heart. Though the look had only lasted a moment, it seared into Peter's mind forever. And now as we come back to the boat, days later on the Sea of Galilee, that look still seared him. It wasn't the resurrection that occupied Peter's thoughts. It wasn't the empty tomb. It wasn't the defeat of death. It was the eyes of Jesus, seeing his failure. Peter knew them well. He had seen them before. In fact, he had seen them on this very lake. We will pause with our story for this week and continue it next week. And next Monday, we will understand how God's amazing grace restored Peter's seared mind as Peter later wrote in 1 Peter 2, verse 24. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. And that's a wrap for today's meditation. Next week, we will continue our track on meditation as we take time to reflect on what is most important in creating our living legacy. On tomorrow's trek, we will explore another wisdom quote. This three-minute wisdom supplement will assist you on becoming healthy, wealthy, and wise each day. Thank you for joining me for this trek that we call life. Encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek. Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,248 daily treks or read the daily journal, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly... I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life, together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.